the uh, is that there is that an experiment for them to see if they can get someone to commit suicide? I don't think it's necessarily their goal, and the reason I think that is if most of these victims have been victimized for a decade or more, um, you know that's why when people say, well, you know, what are they getting at? What are their goals of the victimization? And that's why we think it's experimentation. If you wanted to ruin somebody's life financially and psychologically and politically, you can do that in a couple of weeks with this technology. You don't have to continue victimizing someone for a decade. And I, I don't think their ultimate goal is to force the person into suicide. I think that's an unfortunate side effect of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, I think the, if from a medical point of view, there's only two reasons to study someone for a decade, and that's a behavioral study to see you know, how, how far you can make someone go under your control, and a cancer study. And that's if, if the ultimate goal is to use this globally to control the mass of the population, you'll want to know what type of weird cancers its exposure is going to cause over a long period of time. So, the, the, okay, so for men, there's a, there's a prostate cancer epidemic, a prostate uh, problem epidemic uh, all across the world to the point where they're advertising tons of these prostate products where they never used to. Back 10, 12, 15 years ago, there was not much, if any, of that kind of medication or, you know, herbs or whatever it is they're selling, that was not really promoted in commercials. Now, uh, talk radio, they just openly talk about it like it's, like it, like it's everybody. What, what in the world happened there, plus breast cancer for women? Well, and, you know, electromagnetic energy, they're finding out, does have some long-term side effects, even what you're bombarded with naturally. You know, there's, there's virtually no place to escape electromagnetic pollution anymore. Um, yeah. That we found out that, that long-term exposure to non-ionizing radiation certainly, you know, can cause um, blood changes, lymphoma-type changes, mm-hmm. various types of cancers. If a lot of these people are being chipped, um, the chips themselves, you know, even Verichip is one of the major makers of, of uh, storage chips, mm-hmm. implant, and in their own mice studies, um, these chips had a 10% incidence of causing cancer in mice. And an interesting, uh, just wanted to bring it up in case you haven't heard about it, there's an inventor in Georgia named Bob Boyce, B-O-Y-C-E, uh, invented a way to harness free energy to charge batteries. And he had a, uh, a government official was interested in his patent, took him out to dinner, apparently drugged him. Uh, he woke up some days later. Um, oh, you know, a month or so later, was working in his lab, which involves an anechoic chamber. It's a frequency-free environment to do electronic work when he noticed an extraneous um, frequency in the room. Well, he traced it back to his shoulder where there was a growth on his shoulder. The surgeons removed the growth. It turned out to be melanoma, and buried within the melanoma was a verichip. Um, There was a second verichip found in him as well. These have been removed, have been identified uh, in Georgia. Uh, And if you Google Bob Boyce, you'll see that uh, this has actually made some some media waves. That's amazing, and it gave it melanoma then. Oh wow! Yeah. So okay, so the radiation is uh, the body can't really handle it. That makes sense, you know. And and uh, electromagnetic the electromagnetic waves uh, have been a lot of people have uh, proven that to be uh, you know cancer producing if you have too many of them. That's why a lot of people have gotten rid of, including me, have gotten rid of their microwave ovens because um, the electromagnetics go into all the food, and if you're standing there, go into you. Well, and if you look at the most of the studies on non-ionizing radiation and microwave pollution have come out of Norway and Switzerland mm-hmm. uh, and are, are based on cell phone uh, radiation studies. And anybody who thinks that your cell phone doesn't cause electromagnetic pollution, put it 10 feet away from a radio or a TV and call it. Um, I mean, you'll see that uh, it disturbs everything with usually in a 5 to 10 foot radius around it. So there certainly is a lot of electromagnetic pollution that comes out of cell phones. And most of these studies have found that there is a higher incidence of certain types of brain tumors and ear canal tumors uh, and lowering of sperm counts of, in, in men that hold their phone in the pocket near the groin. Mm-hmm. However, then when you look at the counter studies that usually come out that are funded by the cell phone companies in this country, they say, oh, no, no, there's, these are... These are rare instances, and it's not a common finding. Um, so, I mean, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe an independent study out of Europe, or are you going to believe a cell phone company-sponsored study out of the U.S.? Exactly. And the thing is with uh, the lap, like with laptop, I have a laptop. With, uh, when I have the uh, shortwave radio, I have an AM-FM shortwave radio. When it's near the laptop, it can't come in. It's, it's blocked. When, yeah. I take, when I move it a, you know, a few feet away from the laptop, it comes in fine. So... 
you know, that I have noticed. And so even though it's not EMF energy that's coming off, because uh, I measured it, it's there's there's a little bit around the keyboard. The laptop itself is putting out uh, the same kind of energy that the cell phone is. So I wouldn't put it on your lap, folks, you know, <laughs> have have a laptop and, and maybe, you know, put it on the desk or carry it around. I, I keep it to the side of me. You know, I, I mean, it's kind of become a necessary thing having it. But uh, it it does have radiation, so you're not going to want to uh, put it on your body. They say left. Actually, they call it a notebook now. Um, and an iPad. Okay, an iPad's got radiation. You know, and what we'll see probably in this younger generation, the, the kids that are in their teens right now, I mean, they spend, you know, 23 out of 24 hours a day with a cell phone to their head anymore. Oh, yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see as that, that, that subgroup of the population gets older, um, you know, what type of tumors or what type of cancers they turn up with. Because, you know, most of us, you know, the, your age and my age, mm-hmm. you know, we'll use our cell phone, you know, when we need to use it. And then it goes back in your bag or, you know, on, on the dash of the car or wherever. But the kids today, I mean, they're, you know, if, if they're not in class and studying, they're on a cell phone. Yeah, they're texting, they're, they're um, you know, it becomes a little computer, they're browsing, they're texting, uh, they're, they're talking, it's, it's, it's a complete communication center. They're listening to tunes, um, you know, so you have the thing in your pocket, like you say, by the groin list in your pocket, listening to tunes. Well, the only problem there is the cancer aspects, but kids are not going to notice it. It's going to hit you later in life. Exactly. And and so you know, w- w- at a certain age, we become susceptible to cancers, and unfortunately, things that you did earlier in life may have toxic effects later. That you, you maybe you quit using the cell phone, but it may have an accumulation from childhood. I, I know that's been with a lot of people that they've done damage to themselves they weren't aware of, but it came out later in life in the form of a cancer. And okay, so let me. I only have a few more minutes here. Is there anything from the room there? Any questions? They're they're really tuning in. Yes, you're talking. We have a little chat room of TIs. <laughs> Not everyone is a TI there, but uh, I'm just um, in the last few minutes. I just want to talk about the kind of you know okay the two things. Number one, uh, Dr. John Hall, it, folks. Dr. John Hall is my guest. His book, A New Breed, is uh, has uh, caused quite a deal, a good deal of controversy, and he's been, you know, also out there vocal. His own radio show, been on, you know, coast to coast, all the big radio shows, uh, TV interviews. So he's out there for the cause. Uh, can they contact you if they want to ask you a question? Or... Sure. The uh, website is www.satweapons.com. Sat, that's the pretty straightforward, satweapons.com. <laughs> Just go to satweapons.com and uh, tell him, you know, the problem. Speaking about it, when people become more public, does that back them off? Uh, to some, well, I know it, it worked in, in the case here in San Antonio. But once once we had some verified evidence, as you know from the book, I, I was able to get audio recordings of them breaking into my fiancé's condo to rape her. Right, right. Um, with them, her screaming at him. And that certainly did back off the stalking uh, aspect of it. But, uh, you know, the electronic harassment, there's no way to prove or disprove it, and there's certainly no way to prosecute it. Uh, at least not yet. Um, we are go- we are coming further along on that. You know, I've met uh, met with Jim Guest, the state rep from Missouri. I presented him a lot of papers and evidence and research that's been done on this technology, and it resulted in him at least passing legislation there against electronic harassment, specifically against um, chipping. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of other states have also passed similar legislation now. So um, there are people listening. I've met with several senators who are actually willing to write legislation against non-consensual experimentation, which is the big thing we're going for now. There's nothing There's nothing making it illegal for the government to experiment on the public in this country currently. Okay. that's a Now, there's a huge problem right there that everyone can relate to. Yeah. And, and they have in the past. I mean, I mean look, look, between the chemtrails, the poisoning of the environment, uh, electronic harassment, and it going more mainstream, meaning, it, you know, beaming more people with that same technology. It's, it's so evil. It's beyond even it's 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 almost beyond the ability to 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 think about without feeling like you're crazy. You know, I mean, it, it's a huge, huge topic. How have you stayed sane the last few years? Well, you know, I'm just, I, luckily I'm, I, I still have a practice and I, so I have my time I spend actually focused on being a doctor. 
uh, and the other half I spend on on basically helping people. And, and I'll be honest with you, Zeph, a, a lot of this has become my ministry of sorts. Um, there are so many people that are confused by this that uh, they think it's God talking to them or angels communicate to them. They think they've been anointed. Uh, and it's, you know, I spend a lot of my time helping people at least to understand it, because if you understand it, you can deal with it. Um, it's it's when you don't understand what's going on with you and you, you know you're being attacked, you know it's something coming from the outside, and you know your thoughts are being heard. Um, it's real detrimental to people until they can see that there's a larger group of people that are that are being exposed to it and that there are people working against it. Okay, yeah, this idea that you, okay, for people who are very spiritual and they get to hearing a voice and think, okay, this is an angelic visitation I'm getting and, um, you, you know, or having thoughts popping in their head and then they say, because it's not their thought, the Lord just spoke to me and he told me to go here or move there or move to somewhere in Canada or move to, you know what I mean? Or move to Costa Rica or go somewhere. And it isn't their thought. It's someone else's thought being put there so that you're being lured into a trap. Exactly. And, and people that are fairly devout, but maybe not as educated in prophecy as maybe they should be, mm -hmm. it's real easy to pull that on someone. Um, if you start hearing someone who claims they're God talking to you, I had two girls here in San Antonio that their spirit guides were talking to them through their computer speakers. And, and at first, you know, their spirit guides knew what they were thinking. This obviously must be angels, uh, until their spirit guides started asking them to perform lesbian sex acts on each other. Then they finally, then they called me and wanted to know what it was. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. You know, so, it's not funny. But, you know, I, but... you know so it, it is a common theme. A lot of times if these people know that these are very devout people, they will try the voice to God um, scenario on okay. the voice of God, that I'm hearing God. And, and I have to tell these people, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty devout Christian, and, you know, the Bible is very specific on, on what prophecy to listen to and what prophecy to ignore. And uh, as far as hearing the voice of God, you know, there's been, you know, four people that have heard audibly the, the, the voice of God. And, you know, Moses, Abraham, Jesus, and Isaac, and you know, most people don't fall into that category. Right. And usually, you know, what I hear from God, a lot of times it's a leading of, you know, it's not like a voice that says, I am, you know, let me, let me do this. I am I, I, the great I, Yahweh. 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 <laughs> you know, like, like the great Oz or something, you know, it, it's, it's not, more of an intuition. Yeah. It's like a, like a leading, like, Oh, I think I'll try this or I it not a thought that, Oh, there was some thought planted in my head. It's just kind of a gentle desire kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, who's to say, I mean, you can look back on one's life and say, okay, my entire life was led by God because God's the author of all of our lives. So, I mean, in the end, it's all going to be God's will anyway. Um, but yeah, that deception of thinking that you're hearing from God and then, and then actually taking action and it's, and it's not, it might as well be the devil. Well, these people are all inspired by Satan, aren't they? Oh yeah. It's it, like you said, it's spiritual warfare and that's, that's a definite and, you know, as far as I'm, I would hate to completely say no one hears God audibly. I mean, I'm sure if God wanted someone to hear him audibly, he could do it. But if you're hearing God in an audible voice and he's telling you to kill somebody, you know, or, you know, to rape someone or to harm yourself, then that's not God's voice. Amen, brother. <laughs> I think on that, we're just, you know, it was great to um, get you back on the show, uh, uh, Dr. John. I like to call you Dr. John. The, just you know, Dr. John and the Night Tripper. <laughs> that's that's my age. I don't know. I must be ninety years old by now. But uh, it's great to get you back on this show. And it's really this topic. I want to do more shows with you, and I want to get more people involved that need help and kind of you know try to because I'm doing you know doing kind of the same sort of thing you're doing. Maybe I'm a little more spiritual about it, um, but I am sort of measuring the oppression because I believe we're being mass massly beamed. Lots of us uh, right now with an anger ray from somewhere, you know, that uh, and, I, and I don't think that's healthy. And I realize that anger, a lot of it that they're talking about now is not from us. Yeah, it, it's just I, I agree. It, it, it's a mood like they have a mood thing that's going. And uh, they, I think that, you know, they're trying to whip it up. They've been trying to do that with the Tea Party to get them to be violent. And that didn't work. So it's a war. Uh,